Hi, Merry Christmas. It's Lel here from Made by Marley. It's not really Christmas. I just, I'm making it look like Christmas. It's just to give you enough time to make all the lovely things that I'm about to show you. So today's video is all about five things that you can make from junk or charity shop, thrift shop, um, finds. So watch along and see what I did. Gift num number one. Right, so this is an old clock. We've got a few of these clocks sell really well for us we just upcycle them however this one here is broken we went to the bother of getting a new key for it it's it's there's something missing out of it and also it has a hole in the back so with this one i'm going to get martin to take it over to the workshop and uh, i'm going to get him to take everything out of it everything out of it and make me a little shelf that you can't see when the door is closed and when we get that far we'll start um, making it into something completely different than it currently is uh, but I'll go that's what is going to happen now and it obviously is going to need a good clean so now we're going to give it a good clean you need a degreaser de -greaser and a, a glass cleaner um, just to to clean these things you have to, and an old t-shirt just make sure that you get all the dirt out because that's all going to stick into your paint you could finish ruin your finish so i'm just going to get on and i'm going to clean all this up so the next time you see it now what i am i am what i am going to do is i've got a razor blade here and i'll show you in a minute i'm just going to scrape this off so that this is gone um martin's filled me put the back on here and he's put me a nice wee cute shelf in it so it's now something completely different than it once was so i'll get on and clean it so i'm just getting rid of this old um design on the inside nearly always if you get something like this you can either clean it off or just scoop it off with a razor blade you won't mark your glass there's nothing to worry about so i'm just going to get on and clean that off then we're going to paint it i'm going to paint the inside first and the outside and I'm using Annie Sloan's Athenian Black to do everything so you don't need too big a brush for something like this um, start with this kind of area up here now it will need two coats um, definitely so buckle up because these clocks can be quite fiddly um, so I'm just doing this part first um, you can get a smaller brush for all the little fiddly bits um, so here goes it just freshens it up and it gets rid of all the like the anomalies that where things had previously been when it was a clock it just smooths it all out doing this okay so i've painted the whole cabinet with two coats i've also painted over the glass i painted over the glass because i want to decoupage the front like it was a cupboard and it was never a clock so um, I've also painted the glass inside as well because with all the best will in the world there was kind of smears when I painted it black and it had two coats and when I put this over the top of it you're going to see white streaks so I've done two coats on the inside of here as well it's just drying in the inside of here and there's some bits you can still see here and there but it's going to be covered up now the best probable way to get the right size is just to use a spare sort of piece of paper um, and that way you'll kind of get it get what you're looking for so I'm just using a thin piece of paper I had in the studio. Before you use uh, anything over the top of it. Now you could cover this with uh, wallpaper or you could do transfers or you could do stamps. But however, I have my own range of decoupage paper. So I'm going to be decoupaging this. So um, I'm just cutting out the shape. Um, and I'll dry fit it first before I cut out the decoupage paper and the decoupage paper I am going to be using is this one here which is called Roses Are Red so I'm kind of going quite traditional with this I'm not doing it surprisingly enough anything sort of bohemian in this I'm going to make the cabinet I'm keeping it black and I'm going to do it with I'm going to sand back areas and do dark wax on it to make it look quite ebonized like it's old so let's have a seat and what our sort of dry fit is like um pull that up a bit i think it actually goes this way yeah 
helps if you put it in the right way. Yeah, yes, there and thereabouts. So I'm just going to whip that out. I'll try and whip it out. Now, what part do I want from my paper? Um, I want the word bulb and I quite like the word millers. But I can't do both. But I could do bulb catalogue if I do this. And I've probably got another piece I could use. Yeah. I'm going to go about there. Now, don't watch this at home because I'm just going to try and... <laughs> I'm just going to try and judge it by eye. Martin, at this point in time, is holding his breath. So... Just so I've got this sort of right sort of size. I'm just using the one that I used to dry fit it with as my template. You could draw around it if you wanted to, if you think you're not going to get it. I mean, it's only decoupage because it's not the end of the world here. Ah. <sighs> Right, so this, I'm doing this upside down, so I want, I can maybe see this edge here is a little bit off, I think. So I'm, oh no, it has to be this way because the different sized windows. This one's slightly a wee bit bigger, I'd need a little bit of, you know, a little bit of leeway. I think I'm going to take that edge, but that top edge is fine. If you want to cut decoupage paper that you've kind of folded, always go to the white side. It's much easier to see where you've been. Right. Let's just see how that's going to go in there. And I think pretty much I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's where that's going to go. Um, so to go on, if I can get it, ever get it back out. I'm just going to stick it down with Mod Podge. So, you know the drill, I mean, I'm not bothered about that because it's going to be, um, you know the drill with Mod Podge, you just put it on and move out your decoupage paper. This is a matte one I'm using, which means if I get any of it on here, it's not going to make it shiny, it's not going to do anything to anything. Might have been a little bit of yellow on my brush there. Now you get the sort of general gist of what I'm doing here. Um, I'm going to go away and I'm going to cut, I've got some other parts here, I'm going to, of another piece, I'm going to cut this part and do the same thing for this part here and then we'll get on to the sort of carcass of the new little cupboard that's been made out of a clock. So this is the, this is when it gets a wee bit complicated when it comes to putting like a face plate on here and I'll just show you how I do it, I don't know how other people do it. But the best way is kind of to roughly get it to size as roughly as you can and then let it dry and then we'll get like a nail file or a tiny little bit of sandpaper in and we'll just sandpaper the excess off. So you're only applying glue to your top edge where your decoupage paper is going to sit. And mine doesn't, I wanted the work, some lettering on it so it's not exactly the right size because it was what I had left. I'm just going to blend the rest in with some paint because that's what I do. So I'm just going to let that and I'll show you it from the reverse so that you can see it. So can you see that there and we'll get all of that when this is all hardened and dry. We'll go in there with a blade and we'll cut that out and then we'll sand these, these loose edges off until we've got it where we want it. But we need to let this dry perfectly. Now, 
it's starting to take shape it's upside down now sorry it's the way i'm working on it the next thing i'm going to do is just clear up some of this mess off camera and i'm going to get some sandpaper and some dark wax so what i'm doing here is i'm just taking away the parts that we don't want before we sand it we don't need all the big parts of paper so i'm just using a blade to cut those away and it's a kind of fiddly job but you know not that just let me see if there's having to sand chunks and chunks away i'll probably take maybe this some of this away as well i think i'll probably better put it down for this part right so it doesn't look very tidy i appreciate that and for those that do small crafts all the time they're probably Jenny, you're probably dying now. Um, flip it over. <coughs> so you've got this side. Now, and like a little emery board or a nail file would be perfect to go along here, but I'm just going to use a little bit of sandpaper. And you sand down like this. And that just gives you... And we're going to be doing all our edges anyway, so this is kind of killing two birds with one stone. Anywhere we don't have paper, we can just touch up. So it's just getting down at all these little fiddly bits. That's why I ripped my, my paper so that I can get really in, in these edges and make it nice and smooth. And down here. So you get the gist. So I've got all this fixed up up the top nice. It looks lovely in distress with the sanding. I then gave it a quick coat of Mod Podge over the top of that just to keep it secure. I did the same with these two panels as well, just in case you're wondering now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it... Now normally I am anti the sanding all the edges because things don't wear that way. It looks silly, but on this kind of thing, because I'm going to be putting dark wax on it, yeah, yeah, I think it's acceptable to do that. There'd be a lot, quite a bit of chalk dust as we do this but all I'm doing is I've already done this bottom part here I've already sanded this back I'm just giving it a little bit of character before I put my dark wax on so I'm going to go and quickly sand the whole lot of this to the way I want it and then we'll get to putting some dark wax on so I've got some dark wax here and now after me doing all my um my sanding I'm just going to wax and seal my piece seal my paint seal everything in and I might even kind of just do a little bit around the edges of here just to kind of <laughs> Matt and saying grunge it up a bit but yeah don't want as much as that hang on let's give that away I think my little wax brush here has just about had its had its day it's getting a bit kind of iffy and I want to use it so I'm going to go on and do this I'm, I've looked out this handle uh, I've had the I had two of these for ages and never found it something to put it on. So I'm going to get Martin to put this handle here, and then because there's a little bit of are we seeing gold or are we seeing? I'm going to get some metal and just accentuate these raised details. So this is how it looks. It's all been waxed. It's got its handle on now. Can I just explain the handle? The handle was incredibly long, and where I because I wanted it in the middle, it ended up. Martin what he did was he cut here to about there so he had the measurements and then he drilled a hole so that he could fit the nut and put the nut in it and put the handle in it so that it still closed on there like that now that was fabulous because obviously I was quite demanding and that was exactly where I wanted the handle to be now we're moving on we're going to give it some bronze gilding I usually I often use the gold but to be honest with you this one is more my favorite than the, than the gold um, I, I'll kinda, I'm going to do a little bit on here just to kind of like touch him up so he's more bronzy than gold um, just like that and then what I'm going to do is just with my finger and dipping it just in the side of the gold is all I'm doing is I'm bringing out all those details and bringing them back into the piece that had been lost um, so I'm just going to go round it doesn't matter if I touch other areas I'm not 
I'm not very precious about things, everybody knows that. I think it's about creativity and getting started as opposed to everything being perfect. Because if you want everything to be perfect, you'll never ever start and you'll never ever ever be happy. So you just have to go with the flow. And that's what art is all about. So, this started life as a clock. And to be honest with you, I didn't have a plan with it because I was planning to make it into a clock. I was planning on doing up a clock, but at the last minute realised that the clock was not gonna wasn't gonna fly. So that's all the details brought out. And now we'll stage it up. I always think if you're giving handmade gifts as well, it's really nice to kind of finish them off, you know, if you're giving it for Christmas. So what I did was I just got this card, thick card out of my craft room. I don't even know what it came from. It doesn't really matter. And there was a piece of the decoupage paper that I just glued onto here with Mod Podge. I sanded the edge of here. I couldn't find my hole punch, so I got Martin just to drill a hole in it. So that's perfect. Uh, how am I going to make it kind of Christmassy for you to write your, your loved one a message on the back? I've got a little bit of transfer that was i'm not sure i'll get Matt to drop the link it was last year's iod um christmas release um i can't remember what it was called but anyway i'm just gonna put and i don't know where my transfer stick is either so this is all very good isn't it but this will work perfectly well And I'm just putting that on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sand those edges off. And that just makes the tag with the florals with a little bit of holly on it. To finish that, of course, you need a nice piece of ribbon that coordinates with your gift. Because I, I, Matt and I'll tell you, I'm all about the wrapping. Now, I'll kind of cover that top bit up. And I'll go and stage this up. Pick up some candy. And hang a wreath on your door It's Christmas and Outside snow's glistening It's just you and me And here's the clock itself That wasn't that difficult to do All you need to do, take the middle out And decorate you where you want And you've got a fabulous shelf and cupboard So, moving on to number two Number two if you flip furniture like I do, you have lots of pieces and parts in furniture. If you don't flip furniture, you can always get your hands on something that somebody's given away or something's broken that you can take parts out of. And one of the things that is always really good are legs of furniture or casters off the bottom of legs of furniture. There's so many things you can do with these things. So I'm going to show you what you can do with some old table legs. Okay, so the next thing we are going to make is these are legs off a piece of furniture that we bought at auction and it turns out the piece of furniture had woodworm and as a matter of sort of practice we don't use stuff like that at made by marley so we took the legs off it because they were fabulous so what i want to do is and i'm going to get matt to do this is i got him to just kind of test the theory about cutting cutting them so he's going to cut here and he's going to attach this, this end, onto a block. He's going to cut off here and he's going to drill down for a tapered candle. And then I'm going to paint them. Now these came with these fabulous brass pieces on the legs. It was a really beautiful piece of furniture. Now we'll take the wheels off and we'll reuse them. And look at the patina on those legs. But we'll keep the wheels and things. But these parts here were left over. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean these up. And I'm going to use these as napkin rings. So it's a kind of bonus. So they came off of there. So the next time you see these, these will look similar to candlesticks. And then we'll get to painting them. Okay, so we've got two sets of candlesticks. These ones and these ones. I'm going to do these two Capri Pink from Annie Sloan. And these two Florence from Annie Sloan. I'm going to paint them both, both sets. And then we're going to dark wax them uh, to just make the, the colour a little bit deeper and richer. So I'm not using a massive brush for this because I want to be able to get in all the little um, grooves of the of the balls of the, the legs that I've turned into candlesticks. So it's just kind of slow and steady wins the race with these kind of things. And two good solid coats letting it dry 
really well in between. Now I understand and appreciate this is a little bit like watching paint dry so I'm not going to make you endure too much of watching me do this but this is how I'm going to do it and when it comes to the base plenty on your raw wood if you're using raw wood and it's been cut plenty of paint let it absorb into the into the raw wood and make sure that you kind of like get into all of the green the place where it's been joined make sure you get round all there you don't want any telltale signs so I'm just going to get on and I'm going to paint these and then the next thing we'll give them some dark wax so they're done they're finished um they just need to I'm going to dark wax them in a minute but I just wanted to show the, you them at this stage and they look absolutely fabulous totally bohemian really unique but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these to the side because I'm going to show you something um I actually just filmed this thought I'd filmed it on camera for you and I forgot this was a stainless steel little um candle holder and I painted it with self-leveling paint and um I mean I haven't got the right color of candle here but if I was going to stick that in you can imagine that looking really quite cute but I've also done it to other things. When I go to um, charity shops or auctions, I find things with bits missing um, and I just paint them. And uh, this one here I painted because it didn't have the middle parts here to kind of hold in the candles and Martin will make me something to fit into here. But what I'm trying to say to you is you don't have to have all the fancy parts. Um, I've been looking on it, say, at... Um, multicolored candles you know that sort of bohemian vibe and i've been looking at packets of, tw of eight um, um and they're all different colors and um, all the colors of the rainbow and they're really really nice so you know i was thinking something like this is a gift and a couple of the bohemian sort of brightly colored candles tied with a, a nice piece of ribbon and a nice tag on these these would like make nice gifts i mean these make awesome gifts but obviously these make really nice gifts as well and I would I mean I actually really like this one I've, I've been trying to put it in my staging for my furniture but I think it's probably going to migrate over to my house um but uh, so that's a way to kind of cheer up things like this that are broken and nobody wants anymore they're just play um they're no good to anybody without the bit in the middle and it just looks a little bit grimy but if you paint it what I thought you could do is in here is you could put like a succulent you could paint it and then you could put paper clay in it pop a succulent in it and paint it brown like it was the soil and have a kind of succulent and have some candles on the other side something like that um but anyway that's things to do with candlesticks okay so now what i'm doing is i've just got some dark wax and a small brush and i am just putting it into the details um of the of the candlestick and i'm getting a rag and I'm just wiping, just to give them that sort of aged, sort of distressed look. And what happens is the dark wax will sit in all down in all your details. And because I've I've lacquered them with clear sealer, um, they'll be able to wipe that off, and the dark sits in all the crevices. So I'm going to do this with the black one and the pink one, and then we'll get to maybe some tags and some staging. So a simple little bohemian tag that you can put on. Um, your candles. I'm just going to show you how to make it. You just get a piece of card, put some decoupage paper, wrapping paper, whatever you want to do. And I don't know how you feel about Christmas, but I love the wrapping to be outside of my gift to be Christmas. But inside, you've got to remember if you give a gift, if it's Christmassy, they can only use it then. So I like to give gifts that are for all year. So I make my tags and everything inside match what I'm giving away. So you get your little thing you fold it i've put a blade down there just to make a sharper kind of fold you get some twine do this with it until it's about the length of a tag which i'm thinking is about here oops i've got a bit of double-sided tape stuck to my pull it taut like it's a little book yeah hold your two ends together twirl it around and tie a knot and get your ends out and just make sure that you pull on that tightly and pull on both ends to tighten it up so you have something like that now what you can do is you can get a wee bead you know you can paint your beads 
Um, I'm just keeping these natural. And twirl it through the end. And then tie it in a knot. And you have made a cute little gift tag. You can put your message in the inside. This is what makes people think that you've went to the extra effort. And I have one here. So I'm going to go and pop these on. But before I do that, if you're giving away something like some candles with it and you want these to be wrapped with the same sort of theme, cut another piece of your decoupage. I haven't backed this on any card. This is just the paper. Stick some double-sided tape. I don't know about you, but I can never get double-sided tape to unstick off the back. It takes me forever in a day. Oops. It's one strip and two strips. Now put them together and I'm going to measure them up. Put this on the middle. Is this where I want it? Yeah, I do. Flip them round and fold them up like a little sausage. So they're nice and tight like that. I'm going to keep it this side and then you can do something if you want to make it even fancier you can get a little bit of twine and you can tie that around there you can wrap it and tie it in a bow you can do whatever you want but that then finishes the whole look and it makes it really cohesive so there you have your the little parcel of candles you've got your tags and you've got great big bohemian candlesticks and these work for the silver plate ones as well you can make little tags for them you can give away candles with them and it's a really pretty gift you can put it in some cellophane recycled cellophane if you've got an old like clear bag you can do that so i'm going to go and stage these up Here they are. And haven't they turned out really nice? They look very opulent um, and they feel lovely. Um, fabulous big table um, uh, candlesticks made from table legs. I was really lucky. Those were nice legs, but you could do them with just legs with just a little bit of shape as well. All you need is a block of wood, drill at the top. But there they are. That's the candlesticks. Number three, what can you do with old cupboard fronts? Everybody's getting fitted kitchens, they get rid of their old cupboard doors, you've got them lying about, somebody you know must be taking a piece of furniture and it's it's broken and they've got the cupboard fronts. Ask them for a cupboard door. So follow along and see what I made with my cupboard door. Things that people actually want to receive for Christmas and who doesn't love an old cupboard door? Well I do. So this has came off something, it's looking the way it does, it needs a good clean. This is where the handle was. However, at my local charity shop, I found this. Now I've had it in my stash for quite some time. It was the pricely sum of one pounds ninety nine pence. Um, once we've painted the panel, this Matt's going to drill this, and where the hole for the handle was, he's going to attach this on here like this. So it's going to be a wall sconce that we can put candles in. But before we can do any of that, we need to de determine what we're going to do with it and. As you can see so far in the things that I've actually created, I haven't done a bohemian piece. So this is going to be bohemian. I'm going to clean it and then I'm going to get on to painting it. Doors properly clean and first of all, before we can do anything, we need to give this two good coats of chalk paint and I am using Capri Pink by Annie Sloan. And these are my favourite, when you see me paint this today, this, these are my favourite combinations that all, that I think all go together and create a really nice bohemian finish. Um, one of my favourite pieces of furniture, which was called Rinkadink Pink, had this very same um, colour combination on it and just, it's a winner. So I'm going to get on, give it two coats of this and then we'll get to the next part. Okay, so our board has had two lovely coats of Capri Pink. Now, we're going to set the scene for our artwork and I'm going to add 
florence which is this greeny turquoisey it's a really lovely color and it goes lovely with this but I, i'm using a mini roller because i want it to be distressed around here but i want it also to touch this edge here so we're going to kind of roll it on in a really sort of distressed way like this but we also want to come along here and do a bit along here as well and i think maybe the only way we can do this is kind of do this with it um i might have to come along with a brush but um plenty of paint just along the edges for now we're not going to take paint anywhere else just now we're just going to get our green on it and then we can work to where we're going to go next so that's what we're going to do get this around the edges so next i'm using a sort of it's a paint i mixed up myself not that long ago so i'm not entirely sure what went into it but it's a sort of ready plum let's call it that now what i'm doing with this is i'm just kind of setting the scene for our pattern now we don't want to lose our pink so we don't want to have too many thick spots but you know we want it on as well so kind of like and you can do this as well to get your distress. Um, so I'm just going to go across the board with the pink. And then we're going to get to some stamping. So now I'm, the good way to do this is to build small, go from small prints up to large. So this is sort of what I'd kind of see as the backgroundy sort of print. And so I'm using... A yellow well a sort of ochre and what I'm doing is I am just find I found a small print stamp so this is a uh, redesigned by Prima and it is the Bohemian Dreamer it's from the Bohemian Dreamer set of stamps um, you see me use this one quite a lot this one's quite good for back background detail and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work all the way up this board with this stamp there is going to be stuff going over the top of it but right now I'm not too worried about it not quite fit into the edges because there's going to be obviously a another square of pattern going around it doesn't matter if it's not a perfect stamp because you want it to look a little bit sort of rustic so I'm just going to work my way all the way up with this beautiful stamp um, which does very fine put all your fine small stamps at the back all your big bold large ones go over the top of that that's how I layer up my pattern to make sure I've got enough paint on this but um, all the way up to the top of the, the panel and again Flip it over, bring it down to as close as that one as you want. And again, my hands are looking lovely. And I thought, oh, Christmas videos, I'll put some nice sparkly nail varnish on. Yeah, yeah, it's looking nice, isn't it? It's looking good. So I'm going to work my way up to the top. And then we'll get to the next part. Okay, so what I did with what was left over on this stamp is I just went round the edges just to give that another part of distress. Some parts you can see the pattern, some parts it just looks like it's a bit of distress. Now I'm back to the Florence colour again and now I want a band all the way around in a square. Now this is where it gets quite fun because you don't have to be straight about it, you just have to kind of create a sort of a backdrop. Now you can use a blade for this, you can use um, like a silicon spatula, you can use a brush but the thing is brush doesn't give you that sort of distressy look, it, a brush look, puts on a completely different way of putting on paint so um, I'm just kind of going up, just kind of setting the scene so you know where I'm going to go so I'm going to go up and I'm going to go, hang on I just need a bit more paint Here like this. 
and a one here and I'll sort all this out in a minute because I want it a much thicker sort of band so you understand the sort of concept the band's going to be a bit thicker like this and uh, I'm going to go on and do that off camera just so you're not watching me rolling around for about five minutes while I try and get this the way I want it but we, but you, you understand the concept I mean just kind of setting the scene for our next set of stamps which are going to come along here and I want it to be kind of distressed looking so I quite like here where it's quite where it looks quite distressed so you know you just kind of thicken it up where you want it to be thicker so like that but anyway I'll go and do that off camera so the next stamp I'm going to use is again from the Bohemian Dreamer um, set from Redesigned by Prima. Now if you don't have any of these stamps then you can do the same exact look with stencils. I usually use both and there will be stencils to come but you can use the same thing. It does just gives you the same look. Now where I did this border I want to go round but I'm taking this right to the edge. Now if you can see here there's a sort of dark purple just a, I ran it round in these edges. All that is, is the burgundy colour. The burgundy, this burgundy that we used underneath and some florons and that makes that plum. It's good to kind of mix a colour to introduce into what you're doing. So again, I'm just going back with my Oxford ochre over the top of this. But any sort of yellowy, goldy colour will do. Um, again, I'm not being too um, particular. And I'm going to go round, all round the edges with this stamp next. So I've done my elephant border and now I'm putting some stencils on this. So I'm just lining it up onto my edging and making sure that I offload most of my paint onto um my piece of cardboard just so that it doesn't end up getting too murky looking now this is the point in the process where you really have to keep your colors from now on in slightly darker so that it doesn't get muddy you just put the same colors over and over again now you won't see them and it just can become a mess so you need to kind of like start branching out and using darker colours. So I'm going to go on, I'm doing this border all the way around the edges. So all I'm doing here is I'm just finishing off with a Paisley Partner stencil. I put three, I put the three here, I flipped it the other way around so that we're going the opposite way on the other side and um, that's all I've done to do this. Now I have done some of this dark blue some touching up areas just here and there on the piece just to give it give it a bit of depth and the next thing i'm going to do is we're going to set our metal um scones back on this because i want to work out my area because on this area here i'm going to do something wowsy with glass beads and a raised stencil okay so i've positioned my stencil here and i put a little bit of tape just kind of lightly just to stop it shifting too much because i'm using a raised stencil I have positioned it so that this is going to be the sort of position in it when Martin screws this on for me. Um, so this is the here. So if you haven't used um, glass beads before, this is what it looks like. It looks a little bit like um, tapioca. I don't know if you got tapioca. We used to get it at school dinners. We used to call it frog's eggs. <laughs> and they put a big Dodd a jam in the middle of it and it was disgusting. <laughs> so was semolina, but I'm I'm not sure if these are things that are just the UK, but oh no, they weren't very nice. School dinners. So then you just kind of mix it up until you get I haven't mixed up a huge amount. And you can dye it with with paint. I've dyed mine with the gold gilding acrylic. So it's kind of scrunchy. It's it's all in the name. It's 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 glass beads. 
obviously I'm going to put a little bit more and what happens is the solution around about it dries and you're left with the the raisiness of it all so this is how it looks and this is it I hope you can see it this is it all mixed up so to apply it's incredibly simple you're just putting it over your stencil it's a bit crunchy sorry for the noise and you're probably better using a blade or or a scraper but or, <laughs> or as Martin says a transfer stick uh, I do have ways and things I do, I do at that precise moment when this was all happening I couldn't find them so this is what we're choosing to use I think the IOD transfer sticks should have a show all by themselves because what you can do with one of those isn't worth knowing I use them for all sorts of things I'm sure the IOD sisters would love that I'll maybe tell them um, so you get the general gist of, of what it is you're doing and um, you're, you're kind of making sure it goes into the holes so that all the, the parts are raised you don't want it too heavy because what will happen is it will smear when you go to take it off it'll, it'll, the height of it won't hold its own weight and it'll fall through the stencil and make a bit of a mess so you know you have to kind of like go a little bit easy with it this will just give it a little bit of a little bit of your wall sconce a little bit of wow wow factor now what do you think of that martin <laughs> right down into all of the parts I'm getting right to the end I've mixed up just the right amount because you don't really want to waste this it's it's not hugely expensive but it, you know it's not cheap either so you know just use what you need when it comes to your materials and everything that I have used in this um, for the five Christmas items um, I will get Martin which will be a complete not a nightmare for him to drop links and things and list descriptions of everything that I've used which will be difficult because I can never remember when it comes time right so one last wee scrapey over just to check we've not got too much going on now you must wash your stencil straight after use it will ruin your stencil if you don't so I'm just gonna gently pull off this side and gently pull off this side I'm gonna keep the gold there because I'm gonna just show you what I'm gonna do with the gold in a minute Pull that off there and pull this off here and it's kind of like taking a bandage off you do it nice and quick like so I've got a basin underneath my sink and I'm hoping you can see all the gorgeous detail that that has left and it really is quite stunning while I've got my gold out I am of course going to just give myself round this rim a little part of gold just because I can and when th this, is, this is going to take 24 hours to dry I like to make sure it's really solidly drying so I'm going to leave it in the studio and let it dry off and then I'll get Martin to attach the scones I don't think I'm going to paint the scones I quite like the verdigris colour I could have painted it gold painted it pink but I'm not I'm just going to leave it like that so I'll get on to this gold relief and we'll Reconvene once this is dry. Okay, so it's finished. Um, the raised bead stencil came out perfectly. It's really nice. Martin's applied and put on the wall scones. Um, 
you can give it with candles and the tag was just some of the blue from there with some with a gold lotus stencil on it with a bit of pink ribbon really simple just enough to finish it off but i think that's a really effective um gift made out of an old door and um, old doors are easy to get your hands on and the scones you can get them in charity shops i see them all the time and there you go a lovely gift and something unique Ta-da! I'm going to say bo ho ho it's, <laughs> it's always good to have a little bit of bohemian and it probably if you follow my channel you know it's my it's my great love so look at this isn't that lovely the raised stencil feels fabulous it's a really nice cupboard door made into and these you'll find anywhere just any charity shop has them so that's what to do with the cupboard door number four is basically pieces and parts of things that you've got lying about like the tops of old mirrors or the, the video you're about to see was a dresser that was broken and it had in fact i'll tell you which it was it was the piece that i pulled out the skip for the ugly duckling challenge there was a part of a mirror but it was broken so um it was a nice shape and i thought i don't know why i just kept a hold of it and uh, you're about to see me turn it into a tabletop mirror i had an old piece of mirror now this i think applies more to furniture um flippers who end up with things but if you don't do that i'll show you a mirror i've got picking about that I picked up at an auction that's pretty much the same going to deal when it's time it's finished this was an old mirror it was rotten on the sides i've got martin to cut all the lot off and this is what i was left with not very glamorous at all in fact i would say it's actually pretty ugly what i'm going to do with it is i've got martin to cut me a base and this mirror i'm going to stand up on on this base here martin's going to screw it onto this base for me as if it's a mirror on a stand and then i'm going to paint it and i'm going to use some transfers on this one okay so it's on its base it looks really really good so far even like this all I'm going to do is I'm going to give the whole piece a really good coat of Oxford Navy. Now I just remembered um, something that I was going to show you. I've got a little bit of paper clay here in my hand and I can see there's a tiny little bit of the mirror missing. So I'm just going to work that into there. I'm not being too particular, I just don't want it to look like there's a, there's a huge gap really to be honest with you. So um yeah that probably be enough just doesn't make it look so obvious that there's a piece of trim missing i'll probably put another piece in it but i can do that off camera and i'm just going to paint gently over that when i paint everything else okay and that you can do that with little things um that you're trying to fit but i recommend you use filler but this is what i'm doing there I'm going to go on two coats of the blue and then we'll get on to see what we're doing with this next. Okay, so it's had two pretty rough coats. I mean, it's there and thereabouts of the Oxford Navy and um, it's completely dry. Now I'm going to use in some Annie Sloan furl with a blade. Now I'm setting the seal from, scene for my transfers, so I have to think about where I want them. So I'm going to be wanting here and here, but I want a little bit of something everywhere else. So how I'm going to do that, I want to have sort of, you know, kind of like something like this here and possibly something like this over here and probably like a little bit around here. I want to give a little bit of sort of juge to this edge here and I'll probably going to bring it now I can't actually see what I'm doing because if not I'm going to have to move it and you're going to see my ugly mug in the mirror and I don't want that so um, I just kind of do this um, maybe just some parts up here just like a kind of like it's there but it's not really you know the main sort of event I'm bringing it down on here and there there um, just give that a bit the mirror's already been cleaned about three million times but it's an old vintage mirror so it's got a whole spot and an aging in it already which is quite good now i'm going to dry this i'm just going to dry it with a heat gun we'll be back in a minute and we'll put some more colors onto this before 
we put a transfer on it. But I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with I like how that worked out there. I'm quite happy with this. I'm not going to play about any more with the green. And now I'm putting a sort of pink um, over the top of it. Um, not over all of it. You don't want to cover it all up. So I'm going to do some here. Kind of where you've been, but not kind of where you've been, and using different ways of applying it. Now if you don't have a blade, I've said this many times before, you can just use a silicon spatula, kitchen spatula, you can use a transfer tool, you can use my old favourite palette knife, um, really, you know, just, and this is time, I mean, I'm doing this reasonably quickly, but this is time where I used to love doing things like this, it's just having a really good play with your paint, understanding your colours and understanding texture, texture is what's going to make it all Kind of pop at the end so I'm just gonna do a little bit of this here and it's a wee bit sticky when it's when it ages. Right I'm just gonna dry that now. It's a wee bit wet there. Put that into there. Um, I'm just gonna dry this now with uh, my heat gun and we'll be back at it again. So my most favourite of all transfers is this one here, it's Wallflower. I just absolutely love it. It wouldn't matter what I put it on, it would probably sell. It's just an amazing transfer. So, I want to pick out, I don't want to, this is a new one, so I don't want to use too many, you know, this is the thing about transfers, you want to make them last, so I'm thinking... I probably might just take this one. Um, no, I'm thinking I might take this one. Uh, if I have to take another sort of piece and part out of another sheet, I will. But let's see if I can make this one work for us. So let's let's see our positioning here. So I'm thinking I want this on this side. And this on this side. So how am I going to do it? I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be quite bold from the get-go. And I am going to take this one here. But I still want this to be a little bit round here. So let's see what shape this gives us. Um, all right. When you're putting transfers on it's all really about and I don't mind it going onto the glass so I don't have a problem with this and this bit here I'll put something else in so I'm going to kind of get rid of this part here and this part here may or may not work for this edge here I might do this right. So we've got a kind of where we want it to be. I think this is going to be up in here. This is going to go onto the glass. Make sure your glass is being cleaned with a glass a glass cleaner, or this one has natural cleaning with with vinegar, or you can clean it with a little bit of fairy liquid and a little bit of vinegar just to get rid of your grease on your mirror. As I said, this is a really old mirror, so it's got kind of spots on it anyway. So really, you've all seen me a million times put a transfer on, but for the sake of this, just to get the ball rolling let's just um start with this here I keep shuffling it along yeah right so you put your transfer down you get your transfer stick and literally now you're probably thinking has she sealed it has she not sealed it this is where it comes to knowing your paint the paints i put on top of the original chalk paint or self leveling paints so it's going to stick because there's an element of um, plastic to that so I'm just making sure that I get this little rim round here um, before I do any more. This little rim round here and this little rim round here. You have to watch with glass. When it goes, it goes and you just have to kind of commit and that's just that. Um, but I like to do my bendy parts first. So that they kind of then your plastic sticks up in the air and you've got that part down. So I'm going to kind of like, I'm going to 
I'm not going to kind of leave it all. If I can get it off quite quickly, I'll, I'll stick with it. But you get the idea. I'll show you in a minute how this looks, and then we'll work out the position for the other side, and then I'll go and put that on. Okay, so I'm going to take this rose off, but we'll put it back on in a minute. Uh, this is how this side looks. Um, so this side I want, I want, I think I might go back and use, I don't know how I'm going to use that part right now, but let's not worry about it. So this is going to go on here like this. So I'm just going to take this little blank edge off. I think I can probably, if I sand it, get away with, if I butt that right up to this edge here. Yeah, I think that's where my position is going to go. Oop. No. So, same as before. If I can find my transfer stick. Aha! Same as before, you want to get your positioning right for your for your glass. So I always do this part first because it will stick really well to the glass. So you're making sure that this is stuck to your glass first. Then your edges and then your little cutting edge. Do that next and then go back over the top of this. Always add, I mean, it's just my way of doing it. I'm sure you've watched many people put transfers on and they do it completely different, but this is just how I do it. It, it, it just makes for easy transferring and it stops any complications when it comes to going round edges because you've done the complicated part. You've made that part stick, it's on it. Right, so we've listened that part now and we know that that's all stuck on. And then you just go like a crazy loon, making sure the whole lot is kind of adhered before you start kind of transferring it on. Then you do it in earnest. Sometimes when you put quite a lot of raised texture on that I've done, you sometimes get the odd little bit just left behind. Just make sure you go back and pick those up. Um, it's different with a lovely smooth surface. Um, yeah. Make sure I've got this all down in here. So it's really just these parts here. And for some reason, I just not want to stick. So let's not bother. Right. So what I'm going to put in here is obviously we're missing a part. So I think I might just see if I can put the head of this blue one in. So you can see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to really use no more than one sheet. Because um, then that way you've got more for other projects. As I said, I don't mind breaking it in and taking more, but you know, I always think the best way to kind of decide what you're doing with it is take it off its back. And, but then you really have to commit. So I'm going to get on. And really what I'm going to do is, with what's left here, I'm just going to make put the rest of the transfers on, cutting them up and put them on and then we'll find an accent colour which I think is maybe going to be red or maybe a darker pink, I don't know and um, 
we'll accent it all out and we'll be done. I've got an old can of Emperor Silk here. It's really thick at the bottom, which is just fabulous for what I'm about to do. I'm out loading on a little bit of paper and all I'm doing is I'm just kind of like dry brushing um, the rim with this nice thick paint. I'm not bothered if it gets on any other edges. In fact, I might even do something like this around this corner here and bring it down into my flowers. Because you're trying to create a true sort of real art piece in this mirror. I mean, it started off as pieces and parts, but you want to finish this. You know, this is a gift. So put the time in to do it. Do it right. Um, but I'm just kind of like going to go round this edge and I think I'm going to, because I quite enjoy this now, I'm going to go in round here. I think just for the sake of, you know, when I, when I go off camera, I'm probably going to bring highlights of my red into it as well because there's quite a lot of red in the parts of the transfer that I've found. So I'm just going to kind of bring it down and sort of bring a sort of red into it. But I'm going to go around these edges first and then um, after that, I think we'll be on to sealing it. Okay, so I put all the red on and then what I did was I dipped um, my transfer stick in the Natal Rose, which was the pink that we put on. And what I did was I just went to town like I normally do and gave it loads of texture and interest and that's what I did. Now I've got a little cloth here and I don't have much clear wax in this but I'm going to clear wax it before I dark wax this piece. So I'm clear waxing the transfers on as well um, and I'm just going around and making sure that it brings out all the nice colour and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll come back and we'll dark wax it but I don't want it the dark wax to kind of overpower it so I'm on the front I'm just gonna, you know, make sure that I've got a right, a nice right coat of clear wax before I do anything else. So I'm gonna do that and then we'll get to the dark wax. Okay, so it's all been cleared wax, so I know that I can rub it off if it all becomes too much. So I'm just gonna really start kind of working it in now. Don't panic if it looks too dark. You know that you've you've waxed it um with your clear wax. Oh, there's a wee more. So I'll just show you this part here. It's for, um, the reason why I'm doing this, you know, like when you put the transfer on, you get little cracks in the transfer when I was putting on the mirror. And I love it when the dark wax sets settles in them. It, it really looks good. So let's just call it quits at that and I'll show you me I'm wiping it off. Now, as long as you've used your clear wax underneath, and I've got my clear wax cloth here as well, you're never going to have a problem about getting rid of it. All it's going to do is just sit nice in all of the edges and give you a nice sort of dark um, finish. But it's not going to see how that's all settled in there now, and it looks all... You can wipe it along here. I didn't want it too overtly pink, and so... This is a way of kind of like dumbing, dumbing everything down, making it kind of all settle in, make it look like it's, you know, old. And so I'm wiping it off and cleaning it off there, but I'm not kind of too bothered about those edges. This is what I mean about this, all the dark settling in there. It make, just makes it look great. Um, we'll do this part here. So really, now, what I'm going to go on and do is finish this. I'm going to take a razor blade, get rid of any paint that's on the mirror, and I'm going to very carefully clean off any marks on my mirror so that um, it's nice and clean or as good looking as it could be because remember it was an aged mirror to begin with. So getting all your, your bits like that. Okay, I'm just going to go on and do this. Okay, so the tag for this one, there's not really much we can do. There's nowhere to tie it, so we're just going to slip it in at the top. It's just a piece of cardboard. I kind of rounded out the edges. I wanted it to look kind of like it was distressed. I painted it with um, some Annie Sloan chalk paint and then got some sandpaper, just a little bit of sandpaper, and I sanded all over it to make it look like it was worn. And then what I did was I gave it a little coat of Mod Podge over the top just so that it's um, sticky enough because I've got another little bit of my transfer here which coordinates with the mirror and I'm just going to pop 
it on here like this. Now, if you really wanted to go town here, you could get your stamps and you could stamp a word or, you know, whatever you thought um, you wanted. Or you could handwrite it. But I'm just keeping it quite simple. So, once we've done this, we'll give it a little bit of dark wax around the edges. Give it a little bit of in keeping with the mirror. A transfer and there like that and I think what I'll do is I'll just grab a little bit of sandpaper uh, this is quite buff sandpaper you would normally do it with much finer than this but just want this to look a little bit distressed as well I didn't sand my transfers on the mirror I kept them quite intact so a wee bit of sanding and a wee bit of dark wax around the edges of this If you kind of sand back a transfer, you can do this, and what will happen is your dark wax will sit in where you've sanded it. Now you give this a wee wipe back with your rag. And there you go, a little vintage tag. You can write something, get, cut out a piece of paper, put your message and stick it on the back. So let's get to see how this one looks all staged up. This is it hasn't it turned out amazing and really to be honest with you it was going nowhere and i have a and i'm not exaggerating a stack of mirrors that come off of things or the things that are broken or have made into something else and I, they just get i've just got a pile of them and i thought this was just probably going to end up in the pile but i was looking at it and i thought do you know if it just went on top of a bit of wood it would make a really nice sort of vanity mirror and you saw what i did very simple to make so if you've got something like that that's a good idea number five old suitcases at this time of year i sell a lot of old suitcases i sell them i think for people to just put things in their home that look nice staging they sell so i always think something like that and you can fill it with a gift or you can give it to somebody else and um, they can use it as putting, I don't know, whatever they want in it. Their summer clothes when it's winter or, although only my mum does things like that. But anyway, I'm, I'm digressing. Um, suitcases are really good. So what do you do with those suitcases? This one you're about to see is a little bit left field, but it's what I like. But you can use whatever you want to do up your old suitcase. Vintage suitcases, they're absolutely fabulous if you do them right in your house as staging or decor items and um, they're relatively easy to do and they make really nice gifts. I sell a lot of these and I always love a good vintage case. This one here I've just painted, I've used some rose stencils and you know I've not really done that much to it. It had a nice inside with the really old ones like this one here. You have to paint and you have to clean them all out and paint them inside this one's painted pink inside so this is uh, one using our vincent um decoupage paper and all i've done is i've carried the design all the way out onto the top and i've actually even put it on the other side as well the next one is this one here and all i've done with this one is i've decoupaged it and i've put a pattern on the top using stencils so it's like that. I've car carried the design around. This one's more a sort of retro one. It's quite soft, this one, but I still managed to decoupage it. Lovely and smooth. This other side was hard, so it was easy to do. So um, 
This is a vintage suitcases, so let's get on and do our own vintage suitcase. Okay, so what have we done with our vintage suitcase? I have just given it an undercoat of two coats. It's a little bit marked there. It's just the way it's been sitting about. Uh, it's going to have something over the top of it, but yeah, two coats. Remember the insides. Either we cover the insides with fabric or get self-sealing paint to seal them all off, freshen them up. The vintage suitcases quite often can smell a little bit musty, so get rid of all of that. You want somebody to have it and know that it's all been cleaned. Now, those that know me really well know I have a love affair with anything to do with fairgrounds, clowns, carnivals, crystal balls, you name it. This is all the things that I like to paint. And um, for this one, you could you need a poster or a piece of decoupage that you like or I've even done things like this with old tea towels, piece of fabric, whatever you want to put on it, it's your choice. Now I have chosen, wait for it, this fabulous clown because I'm going to make it like a travelling circus case. So I've just found a stock image online that's free and all I've done is print it out well uh -huh. I didn't print it out Martin did but <laughs> you know I said to Martin get me a clown he got me a clown so this is my clown all I'm going to do like you would do with the decoupage because it's actually printed on our decoupage paper um, is just rip off the edge just to make it easier to blend and then all we're going to do is we're going to slap that right into the middle of our case I've got two so I've got one for the other side as well and the good thing about this is you can already see kind of where your blends for your edges is going to go. We're going to be doing some yellows, we're going to be doing some reds, some pinks, some oranges. And we're going to blend that all out onto the sides, onto the um, top of the case. Now, what I'm going to tell you this, the truth. I had an image for here. It was a vintage clown and it was a water slide decal and it was lovely. And late last night, this is why this has got a bit of a mark in it, Martin and I started to film this, but I did a really silly thing. I didn't paint my case white, which when I went to put my decal on, you couldn't see it because his face was white. So I quickly abandoned ship over here, ran over to the house and stuck him on my bread bin instead. So I'm very happy when I got up this morning because I now have a clown on my bread bin, but that wasn't what I was going to do. So it was going to be a slightly more tasteful sort of vintage clown, unfortunately. This is now not the case. He's quite in your face. He's more, I think, for a fairground, this one, but I'm going to make him circusy. So anyway, I'm sure you're getting very bored of this. I'm just going to go and rip the, the rest of this edge off. And the other one, we'll glue it on. Um, well, actually, do you know what? The next time you see it, I'll have glued it on because there's no point you watching me do that. You know what I'm doing. Okay, so you've got your poster, your picture, your whatever you want to put on your suitcase, stuck onto your suitcase. I've dried around the edges and everything so that when you do your blend, you're not going to get less likely to get some lift. You might get a wee bit, but that'll dry, you know, glue together. Now, to do your blend, what you're looking at, so I'm going to do some yellows around here so, and add some oranges up around here, but I think we'll start with some yellow. Now, in front of me, I've got yellow pink and orange and okay it's not the right colour of yellow we know that but um, we're just going to keep blending this in now a bit of this orange here makes it look right now we're going to need to do two coats so we're just kind of setting a scene here for for what we're kind of doing and we're just kind of mixing this through here So you get what I'm trying to do now. All I'm trying to do now is um, kind of like put my background on it. And don't worry about things like this. We can paint this back in. A wee bit. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put, I'm just going to paint the whole case. Now I'm going to introduce a bit of pink as well, maybe up around here, um, maybe down here. And this is the fun part where you can just have a play with your colours until I've got it painted a solid sort of blended colour, two coats, and then we'll get back to the next part. Okay, so now I'm going to put a stencil on round the edges. See these parts here? These are the buttons that stop it getting scraped on the ground because I'm started with the back side. We'll paint all that in a minute so it completely disappears and you don't actually know that it's had to have that part taken out. Now, uh, I want this to kind of run out. I've got some yellow paint on my little brush and I want this to run out and I'm putting some of it on thicker and some of it on thinner and you can change your colours 
And I mean, if you're not doing this kind of thing, you can do flower stencils. I mean, I don't know if you saw one of the suitcases that I did, uh, sold it last Christmas. It had words on it and it was Dr. Sunny Flowers and it had IOD sunflower transfers on it. You could probably go back onto my socials and see it if you're looking for case inspiration. I mean, really, the, the, the choices of what you do with your suitcase are you know, you keep the, the, the unlimited choices and designs. I've just chosen this one because I think it's quite fun. Um, I mean, it can kind of go a bit crazy with it, but you know, if you want something a little bit not like this, you can do something else. Um, so you can see this sort of pattern here, how I'm kind of making it sort of twirl round. I'm making some the same color, and then I'm dipping my brush into more yellowy and just making it run all the way around. That's all I'm doing. It's just to kind of give it a little bit more interest, a little bit more texture, to make it look less like it's just been stuck on there. And that's what the key to all of this is. It's just making sure that you um, kind of pull your design and make it work all over. My fingers are getting incredibly orange. You know, you have to kind of work around these buttons. Um, so just kind of, if you've got a small stencil, just pop it in around there. I need a bit more yellow on the brush. So coming out from this edge here and out to this edge here. And if you wanted to, if I kind of show you this, I've kind of quick, quickly dipped my brush in the pink. If you wanted to have down this edge, right to the edge here, pink, you can do that. And that's what kind of, you can change the color as you go. So say we'd wanted to do a few more pinky ones, we could just do this and take it right into this edge here and then back to the yellow and that's all I'm doing here I'm just stenciling it out all the way to the edge any parts that I've missed if you're using a small stencil you can just put it back on and, and go around it yeah so now it's up to you depending on what you've done what words you want to put on it I'm going to put the greatest show no the show of the century is what I'm going to put on it. Now, I've got these which are um, IOD um, type stamps, but you can use just ordinary stencils for these. If you've got a silhouette, you can do that. And if the worst comes to the worst, which I used to do back in the day, you can just hand paint it in. Um, you can use transfer um, paper and just, you know, do something like that. Print, it, print your lettering off on your home computer and then just get some carbon paper and just put your lettering on that way. Give it a wee sand around the edges and it's as good as anything else, but I just happen to have stamps, but you don't have to have them to do something like this. So I'm not gonna do too much of this in camera because you know what happens. I just go a bit wonky and it all becomes too much for me, but I'll show you the first couple. So just load up your stamps with plenty of ink because you want this to be nice and, and there's a lot of chalk paint on this which means that it takes a bit more to stamp onto it so get a hold of your stamp and pop it down so by the time i've done all this we've got a couple more things to do to this i'm sealing it and everything and then we will be be done i've painted the inside by the way i'll show you that in a minute i've painted it just a spare colour of paint I had, it's a kind of plummy pink just because you have to tidy these old cases up so there's my tea on and I'll get on and do the rest so I've put the letters on, I made it say the, the, the show of the year it was going to be the century but it was too big and it was covering up um, the clown's face and that's the thing about sort of pivoting if you can't make something work now what I'm actually doing here is I'm using the IOD Peony stamp because I want to put my flower in his hair up here. So I'm going to do this and then just wrap it up around the corner so it goes onto the top as well. And then I'm just going to, I'm not going to paint the whole thing and stamp over it again. I'm just going to kind of like randomly sort of paint it in with sort of pinks and maybe a bit of yellow. What I'm doing now is literally I'm just filling up all my sort of negative spaces that don't work now, the writing's on it. So I've put one down here as well. I'll do a little part just using the edge of the stamp um, on here. Just a little bit on here. And the last place I'll put one is up there. 
and uh, so I'll go on and do that and then we'll get to a little bit of painting. So I've um, I've stamped it out and now I'm just going to, I'm not going to paint all of it in, I'm just going to paint it and I'm just painting it really roughly, I mean I'm not, I'm not worried too much about whether it's, whether it's perfect. The more sort of orange you leave underneath, the more sort of worn it looks, you know, that kind of aged look. So I'm just going to do that. I've got a little bit of, um, this is Capri Pink, it's Annie Sloan's Capri Pink. And I've just watered down the really thick stuff I have um, and just put it in. So I'm going to do this. I'm probably going to do all of the flowers a sort of pinky colour because I quite like this and it's a nice contrast from everything else. So I'll do that um, and then we'll be on to sealing it. What I've got here is some washi tape that I have that if I cut up it'll look a bit like travel stamps so I'm just putting them where they don't interfere with things too much so maybe around here I've stuck a couple of there maybe one on here and we can maybe have one kind of on the front just going to put a few on and um, the next thing I'm going to do is I've got a little container and a sponge and I'm just going to run over it with a really good sealer it's just in here i've showed you this before a really quick way of sealing things just this rub over it and it'll be finished oh i think i'm going to get some washi tape and because it's old and vintage and it's falling apart i'm going to put some washi tape around there to make it look like it's been sellotaped together while it's on its travels for this tag all i'm going to do is Take the washi tape like the tag, like the stickers have been stuck on, um, like the case, kind of randomly like that and maybe just a little bit down this bottom edge here like that and uh, we can cut it off at the other side. Right, keep it quite simple this one. So. Um, I might, if I have it, put a little bit of dark wax just to kind of bunge up the edges. You can put a little bit of Mod Podge over this if you want, but it's it's just a tag. I mean, there we go. There we go. That's our travel tag. And I'll just put a hole in it and I'll put a little bit of jute string through it. So this was Christmas gift number four. Now I understand the, what I've done in it might not be everybody's cup of tea, but hopefully you've got some ideas of the things that you can actually do with old suitcases. You can make them look fabulous, really unusual. You can tailor them to the people that you're going to give them to. And as I said, they're brilliant storage for in covers. They look pretty. You can have them out and show. You can do whatever you want with them. And this one was just a bit of blending, a little bit of stamping, a wee bit of stenciling and some washi tape stickers. And there's our little tag because I always finish your gifts off with a nice wee tag. And that complements the look. I popped some washi tape around the handle to give it that look like it had been just stuck on in some foreign country, you know, to move on to the next place. Just a quick fix. So... There we go, we'll just set it up now and Martin will give you a kind of once around it. How good is it? I just really enjoy it. <laughs> I just, I just, I just enjoy it full stop. So old suitcases, blend your heart out, decoupage, do some stenciling, put some words on it, own your suitcases and then give them to people as lovely gifts. Because to be honest with you, if somebody gave me this for Christmas, I'd be made up. So 
there you go that's what to do it doesn't matter of the state that your suitcase be starts its its journey i have sold some really sort of whoa, questionable suitcases on because people appreciate they're really old and putting tape and things and just making a feature of the things that aren't right with them it just adds to their charm think of words think of clever things you can put on them uh, i mentioned it in the video but i did one uh, last year which sold straight away and it was called Dr. Sunny Flowers it said on it it was a, a medicine man sun, it had the IOD sunflower transfer on it it was really nice and I'm not surprised it sold straight away because it was really nice so just think about what you're going to do and just go and do it I really hope you've enjoyed this video it's a little bit out of left field from what you normally see me doing I don't generally do smalls and to be honest with you, you should have seen the state of my hands. And I know my hands get worse throughout the videos. It's so messy. Um, give me a great big dresser at any time. However, it just goes to show you what you can make from absolute junk and what you can turn into gifts that people really actually do want. It's not made of cardboard. It's not a load of rubbish. It's not something high end that isn't really high end. This is what you can do. Just look at what you've got and think, how can I reimagine that into something else? Just by using what I have in my craft, my craft stash, my armory, what have I got? And it's quite easy to do. So whether it's old candlesticks out of chair legs, traveling, circus, suitcases, clocks made into cupboards with shelves, bohemian artwork, or mirrors into vanities, it's easy to do. But if you've really enjoyed this and you think this has started to kind of get me thinking of Christmas gifts, I have another video. If you click up here, you'll get the link to five things to make with Made by Marley magic decoupage paper. So I've been Lael from Made by Marley. Merry Christmas making. <laughs>